the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Father, we're only here tonight because of your grace. We're here tonight because you are God, the King of all kings, the Lord of lords. We bow our hearts to worship you and to declare how much we love you. We have come tonight for a very definite encounter in your presence the bible declares that they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion therefore we pray that the hallowed bread be broken tonight cause our eyes to see cause our ears to hear let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let the lost be found in the name of jesus let light come from your throne and bring brightness and perspective to every area of darkness empower us by the ministry of your word let the results show in jesus name i pray god bless you good evening everyone please be seated hallelujah praise the name of the lord i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord there is what you only get in the house of the lord you cannot get it in a bank you cannot get it in an academic institution you cannot get it in a hospital it is only the presence of God that can bring the fullness of joy, pleasures even forevermore. Let me encourage us, therefore, to be and remain intentional. You must be very intentional as far as coming to the house of God is concerned. And then number two, opening up your spirit. See, you can be here and yet you are not here is that true the bible spoke about mary and martha a contrast of two different people in the presence of jesus one sat quietly and she was listening the other was around where things were happening but it did not bless her and she was offended jesus said martha martha you are worried and offended about many things he said one thing is needful and that mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet when it was time to eat bread he said tell the people to sit down if you cannot sit down there's no bread for you sit down means pay attention be undistracted forget about whatever challenge whatever it is anything the presence of god cannot solve cannot be solved are we together Let me give you a guarantee, and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. And I've been saying this for many years. If you pay attention to the truths that I teach you, if you pay attention to these mysteries of the kingdom that the Lord brings to you week in, week out, I give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of the name of the Lord, your life will be an unending wonder first to you 
and then to all around you. The things that we teach are not personal inventions. We found them. It is an ancient part. It was not discovered by us. No. It's been there. God by his grace granted us access to these things. Paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery. Are we together? Yeah. It will be dangerous. It will even be evil to teach you opinions. I think this is how it should be. I suggest this is how it should be. The truths that you hear and learn have been vetted by the integrity of scripture and then the life of people with uncommon results. I made a covenant with God that I will never lead a people who would live defeated lives as though the realities of truth that we find in scripture were a lie. It is God's desire that in this order that you know him this is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3. Remember that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life. Then number two, to be equipped with the principles. Second to knowing God is spiritual enlightenment where you are equipped with the principles that make for a victorious life. Please listen, believers. A victorious life is not a wish. A victorious life is more than a desire. Are we together? It takes knowledge. The administration of the life and the power of God in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. You need sufficient knowledge to thrive and to reign. Having knowledge is not enough. It must be knowledge enough to swallow up darkness when a student fails an examination in most schools and most colleges pass what we call a pass mark starts from say 40 or 45 pending on the standard now if say the pass mark is 45 percent if a student scores 40 percent he didn't get zero but he still failed is that true the person who did not write that exam, the person who did not even come for the exam, and the one who failed the exam will stay in the same category. This is the terrible thing about life. So if you are going for this thing, it is best to go all out. So that you do not have the result of an unbeliever, the result of a frustrated Christian, make up your mind. He's called it our season of marvelous light. Make up your mind. Some of you here are ministers of the gospel. Some of you here are business people. It doesn't matter what field of endeavor. Make up your mind to fight ignorance. Every time you come here and every time you connect by way of uh, the, the internet or whatever television station, you are opening up your heart as a communication of your desperation to end ignorance are we together they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness do you know many believers know what they want but they do not know what it takes to actualize what they want this is the assignment of the teaching priest hallelujah I know that I want a victorious life. I know that I want a good home. I know that I want good children. I know that I want an excelling life. But do you know what it takes to turn your desire to your experience? We have agreed in this house and let me emphasize again that results matter. Please prophesy to yourself. Say results. Yes, sir. You will live a very defeated Christian life if you downplay results. In fact, I give you a guarantee that your Christian experience would be a frustrating one if you, your life cannot capture sufficient results. It is in your results that Jesus is glorified. Hallelujah. One of the ways we lift up Jesus 
is that our lives command dimensions of results that dumbfound principalities and powers jesus wants the church to manifest the fullness of his glory please give us ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 9 and 10 my verse of emphasis is verse 10 i'm just i'm just preparing your heart it says and to make men see what is the fellowship of the mystery paul is speaking now which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by jesus christ 10 let's read together ready one to read to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by who the church the manifold wisdom of god so the entire the entire engracing that was given to apostle paul he's teaching the church in ephesus now that the reason why god so lavishly subjected me through this this rigorous spiritual training and granted me access to revelation is to bring you to this point that from your life and through your life there would be a display of such excellence your life becomes a living epistle you know what it means a living epistle means you become a continuation of everything written in scripture that means if someone forgets his bible at home he does not cry again when he sees you you become a continuation of what he was reading whatever he did not understand in his devotion in the morning your life becomes an explanation of it if he were studying about the favor of god and he didn't understand because of the context the culture that was used god will use you he will personify and say in addition to what you read look at this life if the person studies that god is all powerful that god is able to deliver and save to the uttermost you become an explanation a clarification to everything that scripture says this is why jesus was called the logos of god the thoughts of god whatever god was thinking jesus was acting out are we together it gives god great glory for the saints to access light shout light one more time say light high level spiritual illumination let me tell you the truth nothing empowers like light but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light god made many lights but there were two great lights that sustained the ability to exert dominion the bible says the first light was to rule in the day the second light was to rule in the night do you have that light if you do not have that light you cannot rule in the day if you do not have the one that rules in the night you cannot rule in the night please every time you come to the house of god the main auditorium here all the overflows outside and those following i want you to participate in everything that happens in the house of god most believers are careless about the entire time they spend in the presence of god they are distracted others come and they are having all kinds of business discussions while fire is coming from the altar other people are victims of slumber are we together other people are there but they are not there and what you are looking for is what god is answering and you see the way the way satan works is that the moment the word is coming the word that gives you illumination he will distract you are we together now it says how shall we escape if we neglect carelessness so great a salvation apostle i love jesus but my problem is this money thing i don't know why the thing is not answering come to the house of god he can open you up and give you an understanding apostle mine i'm in ministry but it's not working the doors have refused to open apostle mine is i quarrel with my wife every day if we don't quarrel in 24 hours it means one person was not around come to the house of god are we together yes sir apostle i'm tired of my children 
my school fees is been their school fees is being increased and they're coming with results that are, 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 are very discouraging come to the house of god you've gotten a lesson teacher for them it did not work come to the house of god listen i'm not teaching laziness but the house of god is a supernatural place the house of god is not a place of convergence uh, where people it's, it's not just a diplomatic center there is a difference god is there for in the sanctuary god that's the difference it's not because a mic is here uh -uh. it's not because a keyboard is there it's not because there's some level of organization and structure happening the difference is the presence of god are we together it will be a total waste of your time if god is not here in fact it will be evil to your destiny if god is not here oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary hallelujah this is what we get in the house of god do you know a believer should not be two years old listen a, this is my opinion now and i believe it is consistent with scripture no true believer should be at least two years old or let's give it let, in all fairness let's say three years old in a strong functional ministry where the word of god is exalted and the ministry of the holy spirit is exalted and the believer does not have some kind of evidence the evidence of spiritual growth conformity to the character of the christ the evidence of results superior spiritual understanding the evidence of transformation becoming christ-like and becoming a superior version of yourself by by bringing scripture based ideas that replace some of these ideas that lead to a defeated life when you come to the house of god you must know what you are here for number one that you are here for encounters to know jesus to understand god number two to understand yourself you see the true knowledge of god also leads to the revelation of you are we together the more you know god the more you will understand yourself because you are born of god so the more you learn him the more you learn yourself you understand the 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 nature of man. then you are transformed transformation is a real miracle dear people of god more than receiving prophecies more than receiving a miracle more than falling and standing the real miracle most destinies need is transformation and transformation is twofold the first dimension of transformation is a replacing is called renewal a replacing of old wrong devilish demonic culture driven ideas that do not sustain the power to lead to a victorious life it will take a long time for you to be free from it because it did not come in one day it took you 30 years declaring your loyalty to an old unscriptural idea it's going to take a while for the spirit of god to win that war in your mind that you can finally give up something that is destructive then you come to a new superior life are we together meditate on these things he said give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all honestly god sees my heart that my passion for everyone here and our global family is not just to remain indefinitely loyal to a man of god to a ministry it is that your life will be so superior in quality that your life will be i told you remember the teaching we just finished that your results 
are evangelists too you are not the only one who should be preaching the gospel your result is a preacher too and that there is a sermon that only your results can preach don't forget it romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 and 19 18 starts by saying for i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed where in us there is a glory that should be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of create the creature waited for the manifestation not explanation the manifestation of the sons of god challenge yourself enough of excuses enough of flimsy excuses lord i open up my heart i admit i do not know my heart is opened let light come the bible says to receive with meekness colossians 3 16 the engrafted word he says let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing yourself and then I, I can't remember the scripture now that to says to receive with meekness the engrafted word it takes the quality of meekness for that word to dwell in you richly do you know what meekness means number one the malleability of heart and then number two the openness of the same and it starts by acknowledging your insufficiency outside of the influence of the world that means i admit that there is something i do not understand about the dynamics of signs and wonders there is something i do not understand about kingdom wealth and prosperity there is something i do not understand about peace there is something i do not understand about whatever it is the moment your heart is open then you are ready for that light to come you don't come to the house of god hoping let me hear uh, okay it looks impressive i think uh, there's some sense in it no the devil is already cheating you when that becomes your mentality you come with your heart opened even jesus at age 12 he was in the temple accessing light even though he was the word are we together please make up your mind every time you find yourself in the house of god everything that happens from the opening prayer up to the time where the word comes they are all a coordinated effort to see that your spirit man is opened and that the word of god comes to you because listen to me when the word comes then you can arise it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you isaiah 60 and verse 1 it says rise to a new light for your light is come so whilst you're seated whilst you're following in one minute i like you to pray a desperate prayer open my eyes oh god open my eyes that i may see open my eyes that i may see open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes, open my eyes. i need to understand your ways I need to understand your ways the darkness of today's world cannot allow for amateurism your life can go for it lord i need knowledge that puts me in command walking in dominion practically hallelujah one more scripture just came to my spirit um that should be psalms 74 please give us 74 and 20 let's see 74 and 20 have respect unto the covenant why for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty in other words lord there is a system of immunity that exempts and exalts the believer he said lord be attentive to it you must understand those precepts why for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty this world without christ does not have mercy 
the devil will remain unhindered say unto god the bible says psalm 66 and verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you it takes light we're going to start a two-part series tonight i've been very concerned about not only the powerlessness of believers but some of the things that are happening in our world today our nation today as a result of the inability of the saints to produce results you know as a man of god you are you are in touch with what happens around a territory the reason is because whether it is good or bad usually you are about the first to know if it is good people will send it to you as an expression of thanksgiving to join them in sharing their joy if it is bad you'll be the first to know because they hope that by informing you you're the closest expression to god that they know and so they'll inform you in hope that you'll do something about it i have been concerned at the degree to which believers have been communicating their frustrations as far as results in this kingdom is concerned i receive text messages every day with believers asking questions like is this god real is the faith life real apostle i've lived all my life serving god but it looks like there is absolutely nothing and i'm not just talking of young people so you would say okay they are just young people i'm talking of people even elderly people who are saying this is not fair i've spent 50 60 years of my life only loving jesus my life is synonymous to church synonymous to fasting and prayer synonymous to spiritual activities but i cannot seem to have a hold of results that become a consolation to my christian experience and it, you see when you see these kinds of things and people send these kinds of text messages if you love jesus and love people it should touch you it should it, it's like a, a a report card now you see what is happening the shameful idea of ritual killing i'm sure you are you are aware of it where people are already maiming one another as an alternative and you will be surprised that if you probe these people deeply most of them may come from christian circles or be affiliated to christian circles the rate at which people are redigging wells of traditional practices the rate at which people are redigging wells of occultism and witchcraft these are things that the church was almost rejoicing that we are triumphing over now satan is manipulating these things and people are returning back to villages and saying look let's dust that file again at least from 1990 to 1995 as a, an idol worshiper these are the things i have to show for my idol worship you ask me to leave it based on a proposition that jesus would give me superior results i've given him 10 15 20 years and there is nothing to show until you can prove otherwise i am going back it's easy to stand and criticize people and say don't go back to this don't go back to that people are not stupid in the height of desperation they will do anything that works are we together yeah. there are many workers in church and i don't just mean here church world over whose lives continue to be a representation of pain shame nothing at all seems to be working they are the chief recipients of prophetic words and it looks like just nothing is happening what then is the problem is it that god lied or is it that scripture truth cannot come from scripture what is what is this that is responsible for for instance look at the poverty the the the, the financial decadence people continue to go down and it is not some of these things may be attributed to laziness lack of productivity but i have seen people who are commendably diligent and yet it looks like it's the same situation there has to be an explanation hmm. are we together yeah and sometimes you see 
when people come with this kind of pain and burden as ministers of the gospel sometimes we make that mistake of just sweeping these things under the carpet as if just forget about it it's not an issue and the person is says it's not an issue my children are dying my family is in shambles my entire life does not have any representation of the excellence and the glory of god now i'm coming to church to find meaning an explanation as to why these things are happening because the church is the correct place to come and find explanations we've done our best to hear what the government has to tell us we've done our best to hear what politicians have to tell us we've done our best to hear what the business world has to tell us we've done our best to hear what you know intelligent people the academia has to tell us we have to come and listen to what jesus has to say are we blessed so i'm teaching tonight on a two-part series we'll start tonight and we'll end commanding the supernatural i want you to pay attention pay attention to what you are learning because it holds a powerful key this will be part one and then we'll finish up tomorrow you know I, I want you to pray for me and let's pray that god will grant us grace because there is a backlog there is a course curriculum we are growing intentionally and because um of the limitations on our times of contact there is so much to learn we have to pray that god will grant us grace and continue to direct us on how to get these truths to believers so that we be strengthened so that we be established because our lives and destinies for some of us spiritually financially we're in icu is that true when if someone is in icu and the doctor is chewing gum singing praises and wondering if it's your loved one what will you tell the doctor Are we together someone is in icu and there is no sense of urgency whatsoever no. a good doctor will be up and doing thinking planning doing everything that he or she can do that's that's the kind of urgency that i have in my spirit we shouldn't wait until september october november then we just say thank god in all things mm -mm, this is a year of marvelous light by september october you should stand with your results as witnesses around your lives and this will be your testimony in the name of jesus christ Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hmm. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 25. Skama shalakusiata balakusiata. The disciples came to Jesus. This was when they were crossing to the other side. And I woke him saying, Lord, save us. We perish. We're reading to 27. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was great calm. Let's read verse 27 together. One to read. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him may that be said about you in the name of jesus the son of the living god in john chapter 15 and verse 8 john chapter 15 and verse 8 jesus christ himself was teaching and he said herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit that ye bear much fruit he says so shall ye be my disciples in fact go to verse 16 16 of the same chapter 
here's what jesus had to say again you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you you know what ordain means ordain means to legitimize your operation is that true i have ordained you that you should go and do what not bring back stories no when he sent you you don't go and come back with stories you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain our god is a supernatural god this god that we serve is a supernatural god the faith life is a supernatural life in jeremiah jeremiah 32 jeremiah 32 and verse 17 jeremiah 32 and verse 17 here's what it says our lord god it says behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee the god that we serve is almighty he's not just mighty he is almighty el shaddai the multi-breasted one are we together now the god of heaven the faith life is a supernatural life god himself is the supernatural god and we came out of god and even in redemption we are products of the mercy the blood and the cleansing of that supernatural god the entire activity of redemption and salvation was supernatural dying and going to head is the place of the dead collecting the keys and coming back to life without blood ascending to heaven and offering his blood as a ransom a sacrifice returning back without blood a supernatural life the supernatural is not for men of god alone the supernatural is not for those in the fivefold ministry alone our idea most times believers have an idea of the supernatural to mean if you are getting into ministry fivefold ministry they mean then you can be open to the supernatural and you ask the average believer give me a picture of your idea about the supernatural they say falling down while that is true that is the least expression of the supernatural it is just the one we are used to seeing in many pentecostals and charismatic circles where people can fall down shout under the anointing with no direct contact usually with the man of god and so that is the closest idea to the supernatural but that, that is far from god's idea of the supernatural god is a supernatural god let me repeat we have been called into a supernatural experience the faith life is a supernatural life and it is in the manifestation of the supernatural listen carefully that jesus is glorified that the saints are exalted and that principalities and powers are uh, the the defeat of principalities and powers become clear to all and sundry when the supernatural comes into play the supernatural refers to any manifestation that is beyond the scope of science any manifestation that seems to defy the law of process in as much as the law of process is part of the kingdom laws but there is a provision to rise above and beyond the limitation that process can bring process is important but that under certain conditions a possibility exists in the economy of god to rise above and beyond the scope of science and the scope of process are we together every time it defies scientific explanation every time it defies the regular course of things then it is supernatural god does not negate the laws of life they are his laws but that there is provision to arise and communicate higher and superior spiritual laws to the end that jesus be revealed and the end that jesus 
be glorified write this down please the supernatural is an interplay between faith and the anointing write it down please the supernatural is an interplay of or between faith and the anointing that means it is the union the coordinated union of faith and the operation of the anointing that produces the supernatural or the word of god and the spirit of god you have to understand this the word of god and the spirit of god the two principal tools that produce the supernatural so the supernatural is the union of the word of god and the spirit of god or faith and the anointing so here in part one i want to take on the first aspect the dynamics of faith so you can put that under commanding the supernatural part one then in bracket the dynamics of faith listen very carefully i'll show you why many believers are unable to produce results results that are consistent results that last an interplay between your faith in god the workings of god's faith in you and the anointing let's look at the dynamics of faith in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 for our background very quickly acts chapter 20 and 32 it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace notice what he commends you to god and then his word and he says it is able to build you up maturity and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified scripture number two first john chapter five and verse four first john five and verse four it says for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever not just whosoever whatsoever is born of god it sustains within it the ability to overcome the world and it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith even our faith most believers know about a concept called faith most believers have heard sermons on faith most believers have read books on faith but i submit to you sincerely that most believers do not understand the dynamics of faith what faith is and how it works you want your life to be extraordinary you want your life to be supernatural you have to understand the dynamics of faith write it down what is faith our fathers have taught us we have read it from scripture we have gleaned upon the wisdom of men and women through history who have demonstrated with proof in their lives that the subject of faith is not just some dogma somewhere it's not just a mere doctrine they have proven it through different circumstances that faith works let me give you two or three definitions of faith are you ready number one faith means absolute confidence in god absolute confidence in god i'll give you three definitions generally speaking faith means absolute confidence in god number two this is a definition i have found useful to me and it has come as a result of my personal study on the subject of faith faith is the name given to the action the action of obedience that you take faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction 
faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction honor of who god is and the integrity of his word the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word is called faith so action of obedience based on conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word most believers do not know that when it has to do with manifesting results on earth here whether it is um in the area of finances in the area of your spiritual growth in the area of ministry career whatever it is that the way god designed this system it says the heaven of heavens belong to god it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men you know what that means that means i taught you here that the dominion of the believer is shared dominion remember we discussed this when we were dealing with intercession last week that the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth he has given to the sons of men that means for anything to happen in the earth realm please pay attention there has to be a union of heaven and earth are we together when jesus wanted to come as the word made flesh he did not just take a decision from heaven alone there had to be a participatory work here on earth at least we know people like anna the prophetess mary had to donate her womb joseph had to be there to there were many people who played roles otherwise jesus would not have arrived the idea listen to me the deceptive idea that anything god wants can happen as a way of honoring his sovereignty you are right but as far as manifesting realities is concerned you are very wrong you know because we know that god is sovereign and you are right it is within his power if god vetoes man he's still not wrong because he is god are we together but he has chosen according to his wisdom and his predeterminate counsel to make man have to participate in everything that happens on earth so when it has to do with manifestations it is not all up to god and it is not all up to man there is a role that god has to play there is a role that man has to play ignoring and neglecting your role as a man in hope that god is mighty and he will make things happen may be one of the explanations behind the frustration of many believers you hear sayings like one day go better have you heard it that is a very bad way of thinking it may be a sociological way of deriving comfort in the presence of failure but i guarantee you hoping that one day things will arbitrarily change is is a total waste of time it takes a foolish farmer who will get up by september and go to one of our farms in the suburbs in abuja you see him with a car a tractor and different bags where are you going to i'm going to harvest something and you say oh really you didn't tell me you planted he say i hope i know that the way rain fell i can guarantee that there is corn for me now think how intelligent that person is does that sound smart and yet that is the exact same thing people do about life they get up and say god loves me too much to allow me suffer and we drag spiritual and emotional bags and we stand in the middle of nowhere hoping for a bumper harvest when it has to do let me teach you this again when it has to do with your life and destiny listen to me you have an active role to play an active role to play the challenge usually is the confusion between the idea of grace and faith the subject of grace if not properly communicated would lead people into laziness because of the awareness of a concept called the finished work of christ 
and that is a fact based on scripture it is not a lie but then most people do not understand what the grace of god is i have done teachings on that and i hope that we'll be able to touch a bit on it but maybe just for a minute or two let me talk a bit about it. you see the grace that most people talk about in the body of christ is only one dimension of grace grace like wisdom is multi-dimensional are we together now yes wisdom is not just unidimensional wisdom has different facets for instance divine direction is a subset of wisdom divine strategy is a subset of wisdom so when you say you have wisdom we must vet what dimension of it so also grace the dimension of grace that most people talk about is called saving grace there are different kinds of dimensions of grace there is the grace that saves is that true yes and then there is what we call enabling or empowering grace that grace does not do for you it rather empowers you to do with a strength that is not yours it is still grace so the idea that the only dimension of grace that is there is that jesus has finished everything just receive it by saying i receive it's not um those who communicate these things are sincere people don't get me wrong and what they are saying is not a lie it's only that there needs to be completion to it because many believers have tried it and it has not worked are we together now so when you talk about saving grace the the if i will use that expression the freest of all the graces is saving grace because that one is the finished work but you sit down there and don't confess your sins and don't open up to jesus and you see that you will go to hellfire is that true you still have a role to play to hear the word and take a step of faith come and stand before jesus and make that declaration according to romans 10 8 to 10 then you are saved here's my definition of grace generally speaking every good and perfect gift that comes from above listen carefully given to the saints and accessed only through the office of the christ is called grace every good and perfect gift that comes from above for the benefit or the blessings of the saints but it is only routed through the office of the christ that means you cannot access it except through christ here's how the bible puts it ephesians what now is it three that god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ this is a definition of grace blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings that is the definition of grace all spiritual blessings but they reside in heavenly places and are routed to the saints through the office of the christ you cannot access that spiritual blessing ignoring the office of jesus the christ of god are we together so wisdom generally speaking wisdom is grace faith is grace are you seeing that now power is grace everything that comes from god through christ to man is qualified to be called grace so it does not just mean unmerited access when you ask the average believer define grace he will say unmerited access that is only one dimension in fact i i let me tell you sincerely the the word unmerited is not very accurate it is only unmerited when you are talking about saving grace in that we cannot save ourselves are we together now yes we cannot save ourselves so jesus christ does the whole work for us in what we call theologically speaking his substitutionary sacrifice and then we receive it by faith the bible says you are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god you know not of works lest any man should boast the works there is the work of the cross not the work of believing there is a labor dimension to faith so many believers have found an excuse to live defeated lives because they believe 
that everything it is just it is if god wants to give me he will give me if god does not give me it means it is not for me it's not true are we together a coronation service was held in honor of jesus when he resurrected but he had to go to heaven before he could sit on that throne he did not just appear he went literally and sat down the lord said to my lord sit down and he sat down and the coronation service was held for him until today jesus the epitome of grace is still making intercession yet he was the one who said it is finished so what is he interceding for jesus is seated at the right hand today he's not just just and say bring me food angels you don't know what i suffered with this evil man for 33 years he's making intercession for the saints the recipients of that finished work he's still making intercession listen 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 understand it don't don't sit down there's no tell them uh, uh, by the way let me use this opportunity to let me use this opportunity to correct something listen please please listen jokes apart we are responsible people and i know that there are shouts of joy and victory sometimes when we are preaching people enjoy what god is saying and they open their hearts but please let us minimize irresponsible distractions are we together please i'm saying this for visitors and people when you come to koinonia listen to the word if there's something to shout about you will most likely not be the only person shouting but the moment you are making noise and distracting people please let it be known to you that it may be a distraction and we love you but we may not appreciate that that is something that i think we should learn there must be discipline in the house of god are we together please we're not watching a movie this is jesus speaking to us so we must be very disciplined sometimes there are people of course neighbors may not have the courage to tell you look you are this i'm not following what they are saying but I, it's my responsibility and under god i am saying this please let it be a practice when there is something to shout and laugh and rejoice we do it with joy and there are times individuals who honestly receive the word i'm not saying to feel embarrassed you know with your expressions but you know the kind of shout that is inspired by the spirit and there is a kind of shout that is just is is, is a distraction praise the lord do we have do we have that now please so when we come to the house of god let's be orderly let's be orderly when you go to see a president or you go to see someone you don't misbehave in the office you behave well let's respect jesus and respect his house it's a place of joy and liberty but it's not a place of foolishness we must let the world know that we are saved to be wise are we together praise the lord i just thought to use this opportunity and just quickly bring that in so we're discussing the subject of grace are we together let's go back to faith really that's what we're talking about four times in scripture as you know let's run through it very quickly the bible talks about the just living by faith number one habakkuk chapter two and verse four media let's work together habakkuk two and verse four it says but the just shall live by his faith the just shall live by his faith romans 1 17 the just shall live by his faith it says for therein is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith the first scripture for reference galatians 3 11 galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 it says but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith then the last scripture hebrews 10 38 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him so four times in scripture cutting across the old and the new testament the bible tells us that when it has to do with living the just lives by faith hallelujah and then in romans chapter 10 and verse 19 romans 10 and verse 19 tells us now that this faith that the just lives by did i get that romans 
please find it for me faith cometh by hearing ah huh? 17 thank you you correct it just right romans 10 17 so then faith cometh somebody say faith cometh that means before faith arrives it is not there and when faith comes you will know it is that true faith cometh and that the technology is that by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god don't assume you understand what i'm saying please pay attention god is teaching us this we're discussing the subject of commanding the supernatural so that you will understand this for yourself and then you can help another believer too to command very very supernatural dimensions of results if you're in agreement say amen, amen. everything the believer does in this kingdom is faith dependent faith dependent every victory that we will ever get and walk in the experience of is faith dependent now as you've heard me say i'm going to repeat it again and i want you to listen very carefully this time that faith is predicated on two main attributes of god please write it down bible faith is predicated on two attributes of god there are two attributes of god that are responsible for producing faith in the believer faith that works faith that moves mountains are you ready number one his integrity his integrity his integrity his integrity numbers 23 and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent read with me had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good that means this is the reason why you can trust god that the moment he says a thing then expect that there will be a performance the moment he speaks a thing there will be a doing connected to it are we together genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 we're examining the integrity of god as one of the platforms for producing bible faith and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken verse 2 it says for sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which god had spoken to him Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, please look up, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he exists. The word he is there means he exists. And then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Say hallelujah that means when we seek him we don't seek him in vain he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him his integrity the word integrity is very important because it comes from the word integer sameness consistency predictability as within so without that is the the essence of the word integrity god has integrity are we together yes
tomorrow is valentine I'm just informing you. <laughs> and um, there are people who because of the reality of the burden that the season demands can go so far to invent all kinds of skills to lie and say I'm in Lagos whereas they are here or all kinds of things they don't have to be evil they are men they do not have integrity are we together for it's just an example don't harass anybody <laughs> don't tempt me to say anything about valentine i intend to just let it lie there praise god integrity we live in a world today where people have made all kinds of promises is that true and have not been able to keep it and if we are to be honest with ourselves all of us at one point or the other have been victims of this there is something you once said that you probably did not do not because you did not want to do it probably you told a family i am coming to visit you and your flights did not leave on time it does not matter what the excuse is with respect to that performance it is still not a show of integrity but the bible says god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent do you know what that means when god is determined to say or do something concerning your life you can take that word that means listen most times we speak you know one of the principles of integrity is the second one that i'm going to talk about they are interconnected you must check your ability before you speak is one of the principles of integrity if i stand and i'm motivated and i go somewhere where there is a building project and they are looking for 10 billion for the building project and i'm excited because of how they clap for me and i just stand there irrationally speaking like many people do and i say on behalf of myself and koinonia we donate four billion naira you'll be looking at me while i'm talking believing i know what i'm saying are we together and i now go back and the organizers call and say we thank you so much so uh, how is the transfer going to be made is it going to be just a single transfer we are happy for this and i said don't worry uh, now i begin to think how will i make this thing happen you see i may be sincere but it is not integrity I'm explaining something to you so you understand god does not speak and go back biting his finger to say i said too much no if god looks at you and says this year you must rise that word listen listen there are no guarantees in life honestly believe me when i tell you this god will send you to do things and he will send you to places that don't have any human guarantee the guarantee is the word he gave you and the person who gave you that word when god told me to come to abuja here there was no, nobody signed any form to say you just come we'll support you no god said it i trust you we die there you see that listen this is the character of faith most people do not know god will never tell you what you can do he will never tell you what is possible before your eyes god will speak to you like he's speaking to himself in fact one of the ways you can verify it is god speaking is that it must be a mountain bigger than you if god tells you something that is so easy within your reach go back to bed and pray again you had a demon not god Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotos Koto Brekateka Nakata The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline 